the inquiry further. Um, so it's not that once I know that I'm one the one who is aware, that's not the end of it. Just like I know stuff about yeah. false self, I can know about the real self also. Yeah. And that's just the beginning. That's the statement of the problem. And there's more to. So the question is, once I know that I am aware, and once I know that, then I know that I am awareness itself, isn't it? I am not an object that has awareness as a functioning. I am that functioning. I am that awareness itself, isn't it? Like I'm something which has no qualities, that is clear. No qualities, except that I can say that I'm aware, you see? That awareness is not really a quality, but at least we can say that I am aware, and it would not be uh, false as far as the word awareness is concerned. But I'm not aware as a thing that has the attribute of awareness, isn't it? I am the awareness itself, which is a non-thing, which is a no-thing, you see? Now, once the question, and it's very popular in India also to have this question, which is that once I come to this Atma Gyan, I come to the highest recognition of who I am, then I was told that this whole thing is done. Is you climb the top of the mountain and finish it. Is it? But uh, often I like to say, and maybe because that is how it is felt here, is that that is the beginning of our true spirituality. Is it? Because it is, if it happens such that in God's design, you came to the recognition that you are awareness, and then Maya lost all its power, and you never got involved in it anymore after that, then you are done. Is it? But what happens most often is that the claimant to the to even the discovery that I saw that I am awareness you see, is almost immediate you see? It, within a few minutes maybe it happened on the hot seat or you are asking a question when you're off <laughs> within five minutes the claimant to that oh but I as somebody came to the recognition that I am awareness so then the contamination already starts to happen. And that's why I say that an awakening experience is not freedom. Is it? An awakening experience deepens our propensity for freedom. That moment of light increases the propensity for living in an enlightened way. But I have to say that more often than not, it is our pride that becomes the claimant to even the awakening experience and then brings us back into uh, square one or actually worse even than how we started because the spiritual claimant is more dangerous than the worldly one yeah. because the spiritual claimant in, his, in their pride will not even listen to their teacher yeah. i say okay but you remain in inquiry or you remain in prayer what will the claimant say? No, no, but I have seen I am awareness. Who should do the inquiry? The same one that you are saying has seen that they are awareness. You see? So that we have to be careful of. And we've seen many examples of that where even this satsang, we've had people come from uh, the people that we've seen even videos of where we felt like, wow, what an awakening they had. You see? And then they said that, yeah, but it wears off, you see, it wears off. You see, it actually, it doesn't wear off. We continue to have the compulsion or the desire for something in Maya. So we get pulled back into this world of objects and we, we continue to have the ability and the propensity to take ourselves to be an object in this world. So suppose you had an experience, an awakening experience, where you saw that you are awareness, you see, and then you never picked up any identity about yourself. Then you're done. You see, but what usually happens is that even 
the holding on to that the trying the attempt to grasp on to that reality you see is the is like a, a fluttering identity itself so you're talking about staying with it but is yeah. there more to know than just that i have no qualities is there more i can know about myself well yes and no in the sense that in the recognition that i am that nirguna brahman i am that awareness all other knowledge is contained but this knowledge is not the way we are currently thinking about knowledge you see we are thinking about knowledge is uh, in terms of facts you see what is this what is that or the linearity the structure you see it is not that kind of knowledge in the knowledge of the self all knowledge is contained because self knowledge is the self is all there is you see but in worldly terms what will happen is that intuitively you will have deeper and deeper insights into the nature of the world as well as the nature of your reality you see which will all have been contained in that moment of awakening you see but they, you would not because they are ineffable really you don't have the words to articulate them and whether the words come to articulate them are just dependent on the on the sadguru's grace within you see so sometimes you feel like some of you heard me say that something is bubbling inside me to say but i don't have the words for it yet and if it is god's grace then the words will come as we as we go along you see so the articulation keeps changing the insights keep deepening but it is not beyond what you found about yourself you see because that is the an intuitive insight actually in a way contains everything but a linear mind will not really fathom that see, it will seem strange what does he mean we know everything and yet we keep deepening in our insight it seems contradictory and you have to learn to be happy with contradictions like that question which you asked you know, like what can you tell about that one like yeah. how would you answer it what can you tell about the one who is aware so at least you will start negating all the the nonsense that the person believes about themselves you can start with that you see it's all <laughs> more round round than straight straight and that's why it can be frustrating to the mind if we can't even explain love to someone how will we explain the source of even love so what can we do then we have to all the sages have told us some have told us we have to do nirantar prarthana some have told us bhagwan has told us to abide all the guru gurus of the lineage have told us to not identify not not at identify uh, just during your time in satsang or something like that just don't identify you see so the way i can offer that to you is to say that we must constantly be in unceasing prayer you see we must constantly be in unceasing prayer but the prayer of quiet this is the prayer of open and empty is also a prayer and i don't want to make gradations between prayer because all prayer is beautiful but if I, if i was forced i would say it is among the highest prayers we can make the prayer of being empty that is called abiding so the instant you recognize for example that you are awareness itself you will abide for some time hopefully <laughs> that is grace you see so then 
our persistent inquiry and absence of holding on to any identification keeps us in that unceasing prayer or just with our inner head bowed down in the temple of our heart in the presence of God's light, His fire, His love that can be a quiet prayer or to remember God's name can be a prayer there are infinite ways to get to Him if that is your intention but it cannot be just a mundane intention he can't just say ah, ye bhi, fir ye bhi, fir ye bhi, and uh, along with all of that some God will be nice you see, we can't say it like that. It has to be God, God, God somewhere. That's why I keep emphasizing to you that there is nothing so valuable in this world that we are clamoring for, that we are grasping at. And what this world is designed to do is to distract you away from that holy fire in your heart, that holy light, the holy presence in your heart, which is the greatest gift we can imagine. So faith makes us give more value to this than to the world. So how much are we living in faith? So if you look at today, what did we value today? And remember that your body sensations also are part of the world. So we have to value the light that is the light of the projective light of this universe. So what did we value today? So that is the, the spiritual project to divest value from the that which is the realm of the changing and to honor that which is the holiness within ourselves. And the inquiry, the recognition, the insight, the love, the devotion, the servitude, all of that helps us to remain in that. You must be really careful in a way, not like live your life scared or something, but be vigilant to Maya and its ways. Be careful of that which is spiritual sounding or spiritual feeling, but not spiritual. Is it God? If not, leave it. Huh? Anything. We can make so many things into like you were sitting with the Sangha and everybody is talking spirituality, but nobody is being in the presence of God. Is that spiritual? It can seem spiritual. Other people may come and say, see, all of you become so spiritual, you're talking such high things. But unless spirit is present, it is not spiritual. You could be imagining all kinds of things, seeing all kinds of um, vi visuals, but are they truly coming from spirit or are we just imagining? And if we're just imagining, it is still not spirituality. Yes. Yes. 
Yeah, exactly. And how to be the most loving to our brothers and sisters? Huh? To not exist is yourself, and therefore, then you are a temple of God. You see, then you don't exist as me, then you are a worthy temple of God. And that is the highest gift you can give to your brothers and sisters. You see, and love is just a natural part of being that way. So today, how much did we value the world and how much did we value God? We can't be 100% quantitative about it, but intuitively you will have a sense. And the idea is not to make you feel guilty or unworthy, the idea is just to encourage you that these things of the world will go on, something or the other will keep happening. You see, every day the mind will take time away from you, till you come to the end of your life. Who wants to give an answer? Uh, I'll share of what I observed also. Louder? I'll share of what yeah. I've observed also during the weekend, Father, when yeah. I was trying to pray. Yeah. And uh, you said that sometimes if you feel like you're open and empty, then you pray all the time and see yeah. if you so to to get in like say for example i've forgotten to pray to get into it it was a little difficult so i have to keep praying for me to again you know start praying again so that that happened throughout the day i kept noticing that and i also noticed that if i do so if the intention is to pray for example on the weekend this is very illustrative so you decided that you're going to pray all the time yes yeah and then you forgot yeah yes so can we forget when we are open and empty? No. Did our forgetting happen that we were praying Ram, 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 Ram? No. And then we just forgot. And then we remained empty. Is it? Usually it's not like that. <laughs> Try to breathe with your nose. Maybe. Usually it is not like that. Because what you will find is you go into this uh, mental realm and the mind five minutes later will still convince you but you were open and empty. Because if you continue truly to be empty then you are in the presence of the heart temple, you have not stopped praying. These are just tricks that the mind uses. Father, even though in prayer, my attention is not on the prayer many, many, many times. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm here also, I'm praying. Yeah. And at home also. Yeah. Maybe it's different here because you're there, the Sangha is there, but yeah. my attention is not on the prayer. Yeah. So I don't know what, yeah. what is what in yes, this. But whole thing. what is the interest? What do you mean, what is the interest? So, attention may be on things. Yeah. You see? But uh, what are you interested in, in spite of that? But can we look at this really yeah, slow? Yeah, so, at... when you say that, are you actually, actually praying? Yeah. Like, okay, so many times I'm doing nothing and I'm starting to pray and I'm, I'm trying to pray with the words, like, you know, yeah. actually mean yeah. them. Most of the time, it's not happening yeah. because I'm in something or even when I start praying yeah. with it, I might just slip away. Yeah. I don't know. So sometimes the, the mm. actual praying is happening and I'm actually saying, you know, I'm a sinner. So, um, this child gave me a good example. Uh, when did you meet Shamek? When did I meet yeah. Shamek? How many years back? 2003. Uh, you liked him? Yeah. You like fell in love? Immediately? No. No, whenever. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> once you fell in love, your attention may have been in your books, your attention may have been in your classroom, in your other friends, whatever. Yeah. But your interest would have been with him. Yeah. So, like that. So, what was different then? 
Yeah. Or let's go, even when we are younger, we have better examples usually. Our first crushes, our first uh, infatuations, all of that. So we are sitting in the classroom looking at the teacher. Attention is on there. We may be even doing a math sum. But our interest in, is in yeah. that one. Yeah, so that is clear yeah. then. Whatever yeah. I'm doing in the day, yeah. my interest is in God. Yeah. So, that, so when you say, are you praying? Yeah. So right what now are you're you meaning, right now you're having this conversation with me. Yeah. What is the interest in God? Huh? God. How you know? I know. No. Do you know post facto or during? Oh. Is it because you can say, but I'm still actually interested in God. Whole day I was really most interested in God. No, I'm saying alive. Is it? I don't is know, that I can't a, answer that question. Is that interest alive in us right now? Is it? So when it is said we remain in the presence, for example, even if we are engaged in conversation, but it's coming from the heart or it's coming from the light of God, then what we are saying is we are anchored in this presence and that can only happen because we are interested in being there. Otherwise this Maya will pull us out like that. Isn't it? You see, starting to see what I'm saying. So, although you may say that, yes, even while this conversation, my interest was only in God, you see, but is it, is that a living interest? Is it a live, like, interest? How to explain? It's like, huh? like a flu state. You see, but even in the flu state, we may be involved in some entertainment and we may forget that we are, there's a flu. You see? So, so now, okay, now try to make the switch. From? Just stay with him and allow, allow the lips to have the conversation. Then you've not left the prayer. See, so it's not that the content of the words is God. See? It's not that the content of the words is God. It's not that the, uh, that the topic we are striving for mostly or the highest, most important thing is God. It's about the moment. In this moment, what are we truly interested in? You see? And if you look at the world, the world is interested in improving their image in the eyes of people, saying intelligent things, you see, being seen as something, get, getting their way, owning things. That is the interest of the world. But those who are the true renunciates, the true sadhus, are inward sadhus, you see, which means that they are holding on to God, this body mind can do whatever it wants, it unfolds. Then we are in prayer. Yeah. Yeah, don't worry, it's good. It's good for everyone to have this. I, I just, I am not, I'm feeling very like shaky about this whole thing. Like I don't know if I'm doing anything right. With but remember prayer. nine months back you were very shaky about. Yeah. So I'm now still shaky. I mean, I'm doing the prayer, <laughs> but just I have no idea what I'm doing. And I have no idea when you ask things about this, whether I'm even speaking out of integrity or not. So right now, is his presence alive? When you say that, what do you mean? Like, what do I have to... Sorry, I'm just really, I want to... Yeah, no, no, it's good. So, do you feel like he's, he's alive with you right now? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Let's, but it's you not see like how, palpably here, like it's not like I, there are different tastes of the But you see presence. that, yes, there are. So, do you see how you could be in some mind state where it could not feel alive at all? Why am I doubting that I'm not feeling it alive now? I don't want to. No so, I'm saying, is there a state where, suppose I said something which infuriates you right now? Mm. And you get fully focused on yeah. this stupid body in front of you yeah. and what he's saying then there comes a point where that aliveness goes away. Like when you're angry with your kids or yeah. when you're angry in your family or whatever, then that takes us away from that. See? So whether we are chanting with our lips, Hare Ram, 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 Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Ram Hare Hare, like that, or we are chanting in the mind, Or we are chanting with the heart. 
or your head bowed down in the heart with no words or we are anchored in the presence of his love and light and no words or every combination of all of these one thing is constant that it's about him it's about see otherwise what can happen is that our fear can be a, become about the fact that i am praying how <laughs> crazy it is like i am praying see but i am praying i am doing the ads prayer see so it's still we are at the center of that see so when it becomes that god is at the center of it not the fact that we are praying or not praying he is at the center of it then whether it is a wordy prayer it is an empty, we are an open and empty we are a prayer of the heart whatever is happening if he is truly in the center okay so how can you how will you tell that he is truly in the center that's the question I'm isn't it i'm still not getting it sorry i'm <laughs> okay. still not feeling so that's lost what, so that's what i'll help you so can you feel his presence otherwise i'm saying like some of you may say i can't feel his presence so this instruction doesn't help me and we'll come to those later but you can feel his presence can i ask something yes, on yes, this please. like there is an expectation that i feel it palpably like that is the time i'm feeling his presence otherwise i'm not like when you're asking this i don't want to say yes yeah it's like um, this what it was to say that independent of whether you want to or not so can you feel his presence now yeah i'll say no, no let's say otherwise you felt his presence yeah 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 so what stops you from feeling it now there's a, there's like an expectation of the same taste the same palpability i think that's the yes but the palpability is 1% perceptual and 99% intuitive isn't it <laughs> in the sense that we say that there's a, we say the atma is within ourselves most of the world can just speculate about it and say we read somewhere but those who can truly say there is a living presence within ourselves is that presence phenomenal or non phenomenal we can't say it's both it's both mm. so why is it both because i can sense the presence you can sense it in a way which is not phenomenal not the phenomenality of this world yeah you can sense it beyond its phenomenality no otherwise you would say what are you talking about it's purely yes, phenomenal yes i can yeah. is it then you would sense it just it's like i sense it both in exactly. at the same time in exactly. both ways exactly. so mm. yeah. so this atma which is like the most beautiful escape hatch from maya you see is so beautiful because it is not purely objective but it's it's not purely non objective either mm. you see like you can get a vibration of it the sense of it and that is probably what you're calling the palpability yeah. isn't it you see? so okay, that, that is, so now that is not there like i'm not feeling can yeah like i'm not in my mind yet i feel like when okay you that this, your mind is saying what are you saying okay <laughs> see so that those three seconds are prayer but in this prayer there is no there are no words don't have to be because it's about god yeah. so then when you say pray all day yeah unceasingly so then so it will not be it's impossible to do if it was in words huh it would be impossible to do constantly if it was in words isn't it because you will have conversations with people yeah. those things will happen and yet you can be in then why have the sages told us to be in nirantar prayer in the sanatan dharm and in unceasing prayer in christianity then there must be there must be something else something deeper 
or they must be mistaken. See? So, so, what is that then unceasing prayer? When your heart is, when you are in his presence and uh, that is what you are interested in in spite of whatever may be happening in the world. Yeah, but I'm not always interested in him. Right? That, that's what you're asking. So what percentage is, it? is that? Is it? Because in your case, you can say that when I'm truly interested, I'm in his presence. Another one who is new to satsang may not be able to say that yet and we'll share some instructions there as well. Is it? But those who have come to his presence, why won't we always want to be in his presence? Like it's God, no? <laughs> I know you want to, but this is how Maya works. Is it? Because Maya tells us that something in Maya is more important. It's God's presence? Yeah. Yes. Is there any state in the world which can match being with Him? Mm. Nothing. Then why don't we always? It's Maya. That's why it's called Maya and not just appearance. Mm. I have a question about the prayer then. So in this, just where there is no word, words, and then if there is an urja pajapa, it's okay, but do I have to then... Okay, so should we break it down again from the what what all we are calling prayer? <laughs> what, what? What all we are calling prayer. Suppose that you are non-spiritual, some friend forced you to come to satsang. Huh? Shama is here, I don't know how much of satsang she's heard, but suppose. This is the first satsang and uh, she doesn't know what we are talking about, most likely. Huh? Do you know what we're talking about? In some sense, very good. Yeah, but suppose you didn't know. Then what would I tell them? I would say, are you interested in inquiring? Who am I? Is it? And if you look at most people in the world, they are not interested at all. Is it? So they say, okay, no, no, not really. What will happen? What will I get if I inquire? Is it? So I may say, okay, why don't you just chant the name of Ram all the time? So they will say, okay, but what, when do I have to do it? How do I have to do it? I do it whichever way you just go Ram, Ram, Ram. So then they may say, should I say it with my lips, with my tongue? Or should I just be mentally Ram, Ram? I say that if you can do it mentally, start mentally. If you can't do that, you don't have the concentration or focus, then start by saying it. Is it? And then, even then, if you're not able to do it, then how should I do it? Then get a mala, is it? Just chant a few malas every day. That will keep your focus on God's name. Remember that it is God's name. So, because it is God's name, is it? It is God's presence. Uh, this may not make sense to the mind yet, but because you have remembered God's name, you have invoked his presence. See? And as much as you, of yourself you can put into that, the more his presence will become alive for you. So that would be the beginner instruction. You see? So how long should I do it? Do it and report back to me till his presence becomes apparent. You see? What happens when I get caught up in the world, all of that? Keep doing it, keep doing it um, as much as possible until you come to a point where it's impossible. You see? So you're so engaged in some work or something that you just can't do it. Then you slow it down or do it uh, uh, every few minutes, remind yourself of that. So prayer of the lips, of the tongue, prayer in the mind, mental repetition, that's how you would. And initially it will seem like a lot of effort. And most of you have gone through that hard work. You see, you've gone through the hard work because your mind doesn't like it. It doesn't want to do this. It's like, what is happening? Is that what you've come to? You see, don't you want to do something in your life? You're going to become a vegetable like this. All of these things will come. You see? But I feel like most of you have gone through that difficulty. 
Um, so then what happens? Then you come to a point and it doesn't have to be linear, linear like this. But it may happen that you may find that your mind is starting to repeat it by itself. You see? So it has become the first level of a japa japa. It just effortlessly it is happening. It sounds like such a relief after all the effort you had to put in. You see? Then you feel like, ah, it just happened. You see? Then what happens is that the words seem to get deeper and deeper. So that which used to seem like it is coming from the head, it is the head is repeating. Now you may hear that Ram Ram is happening in your heart. It's just emanating <laughs> in your heart. Like that. Now be careful of any visualization here. Because some of you will feel like, oh, in one week now I'm chanting from the heart and <laughs> just happen like that because you're just like projecting it like that. Like any thought, you can just imagine it is coming from the heart. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah, okay. Think, think Ram Ram in your heart. You can do it. You, see, you can imagine yourself as thinking that. You see? So don't get stuck in these. When it is from the heart, you will know that there's something, there's something, you see, it's, it's not just something where you're just, oh, like, I'm hearing it from my heart. See? So you can, you can imagine yourself hearing it from the heart. No? It's not that, it's just, it's actually unexplainable, but, but in a few months, in a few years, we don't know in how much time, it will become a japa in the heart. And then it comes to a point where it becomes a silent prayer. There is love, his presence is palpable, but you don't need the words or it stops using the words. Or it stops like that. And then just to reinvigorate itself from time to time, it chants the prayer. Then you're in the heart temple, living in the heart altar in his presence. And all of this is just broad strokes. There's so much more intricacy, there's so much more beauty in the unfolding of all of this. When you said that um, when we're taking God's name, we are invoking Him. We're invoking Him when we're taking His name. So if we're doing it mechanically, are we invoking Him even then without like without our attention, without our love yes. and devotion. Sometimes it's just happening yeah. mechanically. Yeah. Are we even working yes. him then? Yes. So here is the question. So I've been um, telling all of you that to do it in the tick in the box way is still better than not doing it at all. You see? So it's just like uh, I was saying the other day, you know, that uh, Oh, Ram, 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 But I'm more interested in uh, uh, whether uh, Virat Kohli has scored a century or not. And I'm just going Ram, 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 Ram. Oh, what a shot, Ram, 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 Ram. Oh, you know, like that. <laughs> you see, like that. Then, then let's be true to ourselves. Are we praying? Maybe it's still better because you're at least taking the holy name of God. You see, it's still better than not doing anything at all. But just about. You're praying more to Virat than to Ram in <laughs> that moment, <laughs> you see, or whatever object in the world. You see. So you know in your heart whether whether the match was going on in front of you, but you were interested in God. But for family or society, you have to be in that environment. So you have to be in that environment, but your interest is in God. So then you're praying. You see. Can you be properly quantitative about it? You can't. But you will have a sense overall. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I would say that um, if you're new to satsang and you're just doing Ram Ram Ram, Ram like that, I would say you're doing very well in your prayer. 
if you've been with me for few years and you're not living in his presence while doing the prayer, then I wouldn't call that prayer for you. So, so it depends on where you are in the journey. This is a very, uh, and I'm feeling a bit confused. Yeah. Um, my experience of devotion has been um, for the Devi yeah. has been very ferocious yeah. and like, it's like a volcano of feeling that erupts and then I melt, you know, like either I feel ecstatic or I would just be sitting and crying for an hour. Um, and it's it's almost like she just barged into my life yes. <laughs> in 2016. But I can't say that I'm consistently in that presence, yeah. you know? And there are times I chant and I don't feel anything. Yeah. And sometimes there are times that I'm just sitting and I just have to say, chant a mantra once, and there she is, yeah. like, so for me... Um, and when you say there she is, in what way do you mean? In what aspect of your being? I can just feel her presence. And for me, that's been my, I think that is, I have been a bit ritualistic always since childhood, but I would do it because my parents would ask me yeah. to do something, or I would just enjoy it. Yeah. But after I started feeling her presence, for me, God is not a concept. Yeah. I feel her. Yeah. Like, like, I don't have to believe there's a table exactly. there. I can see the table. Exactly. So I, I don't have to believe she's exactly. there. Exactly. I feel her. But it's not consistent. And there are times, uh, like, so there are times I find myself not getting drawn to even chanting because yeah. that feeling doesn't come. You know, I feel like she chooses to to be felt yeah. and I don't have volition yeah. in it, you know. Yeah. So, one thing you have to check for me next time or maybe you have the answer already, which is that once you feel her, once her presence is apparent, then does she leave or do you leave? I've heard you uh, say yeah. this question. Yeah. Uh, sometimes now when I have been sitting with it and I I don't have an answer as yet um, it feels like I leave yeah. but then it also feels like then when I go to her yeah. you know like I just don't feel her yeah. you know then it feels like I am praying to a concept yeah. of her yeah. rather than really feeling yeah. her presence you know, yeah. and that feeling like feeling is a it's a, it's probably comes close to it's not a feeling and, it's yeah. just yeah. it's like a navel launch it's like yeah. it's like a deluge yeah. um but yeah but i don't know i don't i've been sitting with that question for some weeks now do i leave yeah. i don't know but yeah. Yeah. so let's try to put it in a way which is simpler to understand so you've been blessed that she has made herself apparent to you and so beautifully, you can say that uh, I don't have to believe in God. I know the existence of Devi, of uh, Mata, that she is, nobody can tell me that she doesn't exist because I, I have met her presence, I have felt her presence. And in my case, when her presence is apparent, it comes as a huge avalanche, all things happen. And many of you in the Sangha may report that all kind of uh, chakras, kundalini, all kind of things started to happen to you when you started to experience her presence. So, so this presence has been made apparent to you by grace. Like you said, it was that she came to me, so that is called grace. Is it? Now, now you know that she is real and she can be found or she can appear, make her presence felt within yourself. You see? Now, how much of your life 
are you willing to invest in going to her and waiting for her to come? She's already given you a gift. She makes an appearance. You see? Now, how quickly do we report that, but I go, but she doesn't have to come. But on other times, she just comes. You see? Now, what are we willing to do? How much of ourselves are we willing to give up to really explore whether it is true what the sages have told us, then they can come to the presence, what Ramakrishna has told us, that he can come to Kali's presence and it becomes so next to impossible for him to leave her, but um, he can go to her. So how much, how much of that is, how, how much of a risk, how much of an investment are we willing to make on that? See? And what that number has to be, I'm sure you figured, is 100%. You see? So, because already she has blessed you with so much. You see? So, we are not entitled to say, but I waited one hour, two hours, and still I didn't feel her. Maybe one or two lifetimes. Yeah. And, that's very beautiful, yeah. And like, even as I heard you speak, I was like, yeah, but my ex, it feels like the access to her has become easier than earlier. She doesn't make me wait a lot now, but it's not on demand. <laughs> you know, there are, yeah, exactly. It's really just her exactly. grace. So, so that's why spiritual experiences can cut both ways. You see, which are, these are experiences of grace. And we must treasure them so much that we say that this is, this hap she comes inside me. She comes in myself. So I am going to spend my whole life setting the table for her to come. You see? Because it is no longer a fantasy or imagination for me. I know that she can come. I also know that she is the most intelligent. She is the whole intelligence of this universe. You see, so it is not possible that she does not know that I'm waiting for her empty-handed, open-handed, uh, just all I want is her. It is not possible that she does not know it. You see, but the mind says, but if she comes herself, then why should you have to, <laughs> you know, or it becomes entitled and says, no, this can't work because, uh, you know, because when she comes, she comes. So why do I have to live like that empty for her? You see, but trust me that... Uh, uh, your your uh, heart is calling you from within and her grace is already reassuring you that it's possible for her to come to be found within yourself. So why would you not bet everything at your disposal to lead a life completely like that? One more question. Yeah. I feel my connection with her is still through form. Yeah. It is through form. Yeah. And I really enjoy the very fierce forms of the Devi. And uh, yeah, so yeah, I mean, it's like I, it's my question is not whether it has to be form or formless, but just kind of saying that for me, it's still the form, the idol, the the shape through which I feel that's the path it's fine. and then I accept. Whatever catalyst, whatever support we can use you see, is, um, is fine. But when you meet the presence within yourself, you see, then you obviously say a lot of upheaval happens which means upheaval at all the layers of emotion, of thought, of all of that, maybe just, or the body also crying may happen, all these things may happen, you see, or you may find yourself even, you know, getting into those postures, we had a boy like that who just never did any uh, traditional dance or anything like that, but he would just come to the presence within and then he would uh, dance in that way, so all these things may happen at all the layers of your being, but the one whose presence is being felt, you see, what is the guna of that one? What is the attribute of that one? 
that the source of all of this, you see, all of this is happening, all this upheaval is happening, you see, at all the layers of our being, but that light at the center of it, what is that? That is, that is the treasure, not that the rest can't be treasured, but that is the real treasure of God's presence. When she chooses to emerge as this light within yourself, so your entire self is her house. Is it? So there's a very beautiful bhajan which most missed because it was in a popular movie, but uh, um, the Delhi Six movie has an arti, which the words are spectacular. They are so beautiful. I don't know who composed it, but uh, it says. Tumre bhavan me jyot jage. So in your hall, in your house, there's a flame that rises. Jyot jage maya mere paap bhage. So in, when that, in that holy flame, in the light of that holy flame, all our desires, conditions, all of that starts to burn. Uh, Anand Mangal Ho, that means all joy, all auspiciousness comes in that, in your holy light, in your holy fire within. And in the light of this, Krishna is playing his flute and Shivji is doing his meditation. See, it's a, such a beautiful bhajan and so true that this presence of consciousness, which is her light, then in the light of which all this world play happens. But to go to that source is so pristine. To find that jyot, to find that light in our hearts is so pristine. So we must always remember that he knows or she knows our every heartbeat, our every intention, our every breath. Is it? So if we are calling for her, if we are calling for the mother full-heartedly, she knows. Is it? She will also tell us how to pray, what needs to be done, but we have to make ourselves fully available to her. Is it? If we are hedging our beds and not making ourselves fully available and leaving all the responsibility to her, you see, then we are not doing full justice to her grace already. You see? So just dive in fully, my child. She's already blessed you so beautifully. Now it is incumbent upon you to fully devote your life to her. So what is that hall, what is that house? The self, the awareness. In that nothingness of awareness is the beautiful light of consciousness. You see? And in, from that light of consciousness emerges all of this, all of these universes, all of this play. You see? And ultimately, of course, you are that awareness in which even this light emerges. But as long as there's the me that remains, that holds on to identity, that takes itself to be anything at all, it must be in servitude to that light. This me should never get identified with the Bhavan. <laughs> that is called the spiritual ego. The misidentification of the me that remains with the highest in which even consciousness takes birth, is it? is the Ravan syndrome. Okay. 
and that syndrome is uh, everywhere. So I was seeing this uh, show on Netflix called Moses or the Testament of Moses and I realized that the Pharaoh in uh, the story of Moses is exactly Ravan, <laughs> exactly Ravan. You see, so many things are being shown to him but he refuses to accept the fact that God is speaking to Moses, that that's a true God. He's like, no, no, but I am, I commune with the gods, I commune with Ra and Isis and you know, so his pride just doesn't let him see. Same thing happened with Ravan, his kingdom is getting destroyed, his brother, his sons are getting killed, you see, it's all his army, all his wealth is being, but he's holding on to his pride till the last moment. Uh, yeah. Why does that happen? This happens. You can till the mic comes to you. So why does that happen? It happens because the practitioner identity, who was really desperate for the experience of the insight of the self, you see, then when the insight comes, that practitioner identity finds a way to survive by claiming that it itself is awareness. And then he says, oh, but why, then why do I have to bow down? I am awareness. Why should I pray? You see, and I wasn't brutally honest when all of you were resisting prayer by calling you Ravan, but that's the whole mindset. You see, why saying, but I am awareness, why should I pray? That's exactly what Ravan was saying. You see, I am that. Why should I pray to Ram or Krishna or uh, not that Ravan said Krishna, but I'm saying, you see, that is the whole idea. Why should I pray to God? Because I am that. The one who is the claimant to I am that is not that. That that is the one that is the me who remains. So that one must become a bhakta of God and servitude to God. It can seem subtle, but actually it's quite straightforward. So the simple way to track it is to, is there something resisting unceasing prayer, unceasingly open and empty for God, you see? If something is resisting that, that is the one that must be in servitude to God. Because awareness cannot resist, is it? It cannot resist its own light of consciousness, that will just be absurd. So the, so the, she has the mic, will come. So the one that claims the spiritual identity of being awareness is the trickster. So that's the middle guy, no? the huh? middle guy when you say the, the, ch the checker guy is that, it's that the it's one? It's the same one, it's the same one who says, no, no, but uh, you are not inquiring enough, no, no, you should be doing the mental spiritual advisor also then becomes the mental spiritual claimant. So exactly I was feeling like that, like Ravan only. Yeah. And I feel, I just felt like I'm, I'm so, I'm completely worthless. I can't, nothing will happen because I still have so much of interest. I'm holding on to so many things. I'm just like, I, it's waste. Like. See, there's nobody in this room, including this one, who's not holding on to so many things. Huh? <laughs> yeah, sorry, Jyotika is blocking me. So, that's, uh, so, <laughs> so hundred percent don't expect. Now, not hundred percent, not even like one percent is not even pure. So start now. Uh, give this moment, in this moment, give everything at your disposal to God. Be empty or just pray from your heart. Easy. Because what can happen? I don't want you to get trapped in. So you see the loop, no? That selfish, selfish, selfish. And then I am so selfish, I am so selfish, I am so selfish. Mm. Then selfish, selfish, selfish. I am so selfish, I am so selfish. In, in either of those, there is no God. You see, no, both can be God. Work. Both can be mind tricks. So that I am so selfish, if it is true repentance, 
then we must be, oh, I'm so selfish, God, 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 God. You see, but if it says, I am so selfish, I, but I am so selfish, I am so sad. Not that you're doing that, but this is the trick, no? You see? Many children get trapped in that, that I am not humble, I am not holy, I am so selfish, I don't do this well, you see, but it's still that self-concern, which is primary, you see. So what you should do is, oh, you noticed you were being selfish, okay, drop, now God. You see, otherwise to discuss our selfishness will get us what? No, nothing. You see? So it will just give us some venting, some reassurance, all that will happen, you see. But really, even those moments are wasted away from God. You see, so this is also what I meant as an example of feeling spiritual or seeming spiritual. But again, God is missing from it. Because it's still about the me. Yeah. Yeah. You see? But I'm not saying that we must not notice. So we must notice and then immediately come to the right place. Now, where are you? See, you in left the room. Your presence, it happens. Huh? In your presence, it happens. But it's like the interest. So like in you're going presence. back. It was... Stay in my presence. Stay with me. <laughs> <laughs> you say in my presence, it happens. But I have to go. Then... I mean, we move out of your physical presence. And yeah. then... then still that prayer is there. That... But it is not transforming. It is just not. Uh, it's not becoming the evidence of what. The transformation is moment to moment. Can you transform this moment? Make it about God. Transform this moment. Make it about God. This moment. Is it? Is it? There's a lump of clay over there. It doesn't become a beautiful moti of Ram. Why doesn't it happen? Huh? You have to go in, you have to make the bow, you have to make the arrow, you have to make the mukut, you have to make the moti. So what is what what is the raw material with you? Time. Don't waste a moment. Make it about God. Make it about God. And then don't say I am transforming, let others come and tell you. Let your teacher come and tell you, ah, you look transformed. You see? Because you are just... honestly felt here, Mother, that yeah. it's a senior. This is not the true space. This is like still that it, yeah. it is it is moving from... Acha. So, suppose you have 10,000 moments left. Huh? How many of those moments do you want to give to God? One. Huh? One moment. Yeah, but every one of them, no? or no? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. So, okay, so your time starts now. How many moments of those are you willing to waste on the non-existent one? How many? None. None. Is it? Okay, so now, starts now. Is it? Because the mind still continues to love, you see, our spiritual reports. Mere saath to aisa ho raha hai, mere saath to aisa ho raha hai, ye nahi ho raha, wo nahi ho raha. You see, but what do you do? You feel like our spiritual reports are truly spiritual? No. Because they have no spirit in them. So the mind loves. Like you said, check a guy, spiritual reporting, conclusions. As long as it's about me, it is fine. Yeah. Is it? If you make it about God, it starts saying, but you will not make it, it's not for you, you are not there. It, it tries to bring... Have all of you noticed your center of gravity shifting away from the me towards God? And then back yeah. to the me and then back towards God. You've seen that. So the idea of spirituality is to keep the center of gravity at God. No matter how true the report may seem about me, I am not bothered. Is it? 
you see what i'm saying keep the locus on god keep the focus also on god but is it the mind will tempt you ah sanjeev uh, father just some time back you were saying uh, what are we doing you know to how much do we really want the presence to feel the presence yeah. uh so we have to have a table set is yes. what you said father so, so uh, praying you know devotion and you know being humble all this is setting the table father yes yes exactly exactly to be all that helps us to be empty of me available for god is to set the table so that's why i don't know if all of you were here when was i sharing the shabri example in satsang in the part that's so amazing isn't it that she spent so many decades of her life you see just setting the flowers on the path picking the bees every day tasting every one to make sure they are sweet so when ram will come she did not doubt that he will come she had faith that he will come and her faith she did not waver for 50 60 i don't know how many years it looked like at least 50 60 years where every day one was to do this you see so why is that story so important a story is so important because we lose patience in 50 minutes 60 minutes why is god not coming but to have that kind of faith saying he will come she will come and to set the table is to the same way like she laid the flowers on the path we don't want him to encounter this selfish proud entity non entity actually we want him to encounter the highest that i have to offer the sweetest bear is what uh, it's of course a true story but also metaphorical she's offering him the sweetest uh, fruit from the forest what is the sweetest fruit that we have to offer him our love our humility our devotion our faith our kindness our compassion isn't it? we know in our heart what is sweet to god like we may deny it we may say i don't know i am more intellectual i read shastra you know i don't know about these things like that i am more interested in existence and nothingness and all of those things but actually we know in our heart what is sweet to god what is what is right to god what is good to god and that is what we must cultivate that is what we must grow in so when he comes then he gets the best fruits a beautiful way to put this across but there was there's one more thing i want to share Uh, can you just dwell on that a bit more so it becomes clear so is our lives worthy fruit for god or, or is truth worthy worthy fruit for fruit for god truth we would offer him honesty integrity not lie is is a life lived in anger and envy is it jealousy and competitiveness the right fruit for god it is kindness it is sharing it is letting the brother or sister go first that is the worthy fruit for god we know these things in our heart 
when it comes to application moment to moment that's where the mind takes us so and i'm fully aware that if all of you call me father you call me your teacher then my life has to be a representative of that you see i cannot just be lip service so i cannot just be unkind and selfish and angry and uh, competitive and uh, egoic and want to be seen and all of that and then preach all of these things to you because then that preaching has no power if it doesn't come from a place of authenticity you see so i myself have to grow in this i have to learn every day i am trying to learn you see and grow in this process so because i don't want to be just a performer i don't want it to be lip service because i want to set the table all the time for his presence to feast on so the work is never done for anyone for any of us what is the second part father the other day you were mentioning that in you know, the outside world when we deal with people you know that's a true test for us and you we have to uh, look at them with love love in our heart so i experienced this father so this something that happened in where uh, you yeah. know i i was being told that you know you didn't do this you didn't do yeah. that you're not right yeah. all of that initially it was quite you know got offended no no no, no. I, i was supposed to do i mean i did it because of a reason and all that but then you know i went i went to the prayer room and i just sat in front of god and then then it came i just realized from inside father that i am just a sinner you know it is easier just to say that okay it's my fault and just close it it's end of story i am i i did something but even wrong. that <laughs> it's tricky no so what you're saying is actually the truth is something else but is it easier to accept that i am only listening no 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 i didn't I mean know it you in didn't, that i know you didn't but it can come across like that you see and so okay so you didn't but uh, let me make the point for everyone we must be careful of that because then we are not really meaning the prayer of the beggar servant we are saying but that is because nobody will accept that i am right and they are wrong anyway so let me make both of us feel better by saying i am the sinner okay you didn't mean that okay <laughs> so it it is very common in the human condition for us to get into those traps you see so when we say that we are the foolish ones that when i say i am a foolish beggar and a sinner who forgets god so many times do you feel like i will want to feed god lies as my life i won't want to so it has to come from a place of authenticity because i see my stupidity i see that uh, not one full day can i spend fully with god and what kind of teacher must i be then yeah. i don't know why all of you kids come <laughs> is it can i spend one entire day fully only interested can do it so i feel on that uh, criteria but uh, but i'm trying honestly is it so, so father if so when you face criticism or somebody accuses you then we must be obedient to god's will is it because sometimes and maybe most of the time we can be meek about it and say uh, whatever comes in that moment uh, but uh, sometimes from your heart you will be guided to share from or confront the issue even but if you are not going with your heart then be meek if you are going to be mental about it if you are going to take a position take the sheepish position but if you're going to be go to your heart then be completely open because the heart may tell you to pick up your bow and arrow you don't know you be careful of using this as an excuse okay because god knows everything you can't just fake it because if you win in the world it doesn't help anything 
Uh, you know what I mean by that? If you win in the world, suppose you picked up the bow and arrow, you see, and then when people ask you, they say, but my heart told me. You will get away with it in the world. Because the world has no way of verifying whether your heart told you or where it came from. And the, to the mind that feels like, oh, I got away with it. But you didn't at all because God knows everything. You had a bitter bear for Ram by holding on to that lie. So be careful of the appreciation or the acceptance of the world. It actually doesn't mean anything at all. In your heart you know. Is it? So if you truly went to your heart and your heart had Krishna with the chariot waiting, Chalo, Aja, get your bow and arrow and start firing, then you must fire that. If it said no, keep quiet and bow down, then you must do that. But again I'm saying it's not to be used because if you lie about it for your convenience and say God told me this way, then you cannot hide it from God. And what are you what are you trying to do? Just to become right in the world, just lie, use God's name to lie about it. And I see that uh, in this world, there may be even teachers using this kind of uh, tactics because they think that to win in the world is enough. Don't fall for those things, my child. It's never... You may become the king of the world, but If you not see, set the table right for God, you must make it right. So, got the answer. So, what to do when you are faced with un, uh, unfair criticism? If you are too caught up in your mind, then you are not able to bring your focus to God, then just be meek, just bow down and say, I am going to my room, let's talk about it later. Okay? But if you can still be with your heart, then your heart will guide you. It will put the words in your mouth. It will move you. And you cannot expect like the perfect outcomes in your mind because of that. But you know that the outcomes are perfect as far as God is concerned. Father, I wanted to add, um, so the outcome is not something which I was reflecting yeah. on. What I was reflecting on was it makes sense if we bow down yeah. than if we take a position. That was something which yeah. I was reflecting yeah. on, Father. If you are going to take a position, may it be a position of bowing down. You see? The higher position is to be empty and move with the will of God. Really? But sometimes in these situations, we are not able to hear God because we have to feeling too frazzled or whatever in our head, then bow down. <clears throat> Father, on the... This Ravana sometimes seems undodgeable. Uh -huh. um, no matter what one tries sometimes, and what I mean by that is there's the obvious Ravana which you can, one can spot. Then there is the place of calm abiding where there's presence. And then there's this limbo land which is Ravana dressed as the saint. Yes. And you talk about that and remind us all the time. So the amount of vigilance it takes um, to be able to distinguish that is also confusing in the sense that is this vigilance yes. also now the checker guy? Yes. Then there's no way I can figure this out. Yeah. And and my intuitive answer to myself there is no, I don't have to get confused by all of these words I just said. Yeah. Even if there is vigilance happening, I don't have to confuse that with the checker guy because there is a different texture to that vigilance and that's all I have I don't have anything more than that thank you that's a very good question thank you and um, hopefully this will make everything simpler
for all of you. So after having heard all of this, it may seem intimidating at times. Like, then what am I supposed to do? See, see. Am I being Raman? But I seem like it's just seeming selfish. See? So the really the the trick is let me put it this way. When we are in God's presence, you see, let's call the being in his presence, let's call it heaven. Huh? Now, what cannot happen in heaven? Cannot suffer in heaven? We may still feel pain. You can't suffer in heaven. And you cannot go wrong. You, see? you cannot quote unquote sin in heaven. You see? So, really, when I say that the compass is inside us, in our heart, and that will guide us. So our job is just to be in that presence, to be in his presence. Then truly, if you're doing that, then external actions, inward postures, all that is taken care of. So, and then if you're in the mind, let's call that hell, or so separation from God's presence. Then no matter if you have, we are doing everything Vedantically, not even Vedantically, Vedically. Uh, every every step is taken in the right way, we are bowing down in the right direction, we have the Agni with the right ingredients, everything. But if it is missing, God's presence is missing, it is still not auspicious, truly. Especially for those who have found His presence. Yeah, for those who haven't found His presence yet, or have found it but they can't really make out, it's okay, they have to go by the book a little bit. But for them who can stay with him, they must stay with him and then his will will become clearer and clearer for every situation. So Father, where the question is coming from, and thank you for just clarifying that, it helps a lot. Um, but since I've been doing ADS, uh, not getting out of bed till the presence is felt in a sustained way. Um, still, as the day evolves, as his body moves through its activities, interactions begin, um, there is something that is able to see that there is decay. I mean, I, I'm just using words that are yeah, some kind of a decay. Yeah. And then it rises again. Yeah. But that, that, that decay and the observation of that decay and that rising feels like a vigilance. Yeah. But a very soft village, it's not like this paranoid vigilance. It can happen. And uh, it can happen like this for all of us. So I'll give you an example. Uh, this morning I had oh, some very strange dream where in, my, in the dream uh, my son was caught in a riot uh, close by and uh, he called me and it's still a bit emotional for me to share but he called me and said uh, like he used to talk like a baby but uh, he was a grown up but he said oh they are bothering us pops or something like that and I remember the the fear and the anger and all the emotion in the dream I still remember it now, I said, you get down and fight beta, I'm coming. Yeah. So, and then I started running, I was running on the road looking for him and the dream ended. So, I woke up and cried. <laughs> and as soon as I finished crying, I called him and said, are you okay, what's happening? He was fine, he was watching Wrestlemania or something, but he <laughs> maybe that's what I was speaking of. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, in that uh, uh, moments of suffering, I was feeling disconnected from his life, from his presence. So that disconnection can be felt by all of us. So then I just prayed and returned to him in the heart. So nobody can say that they've come to a point where his presence is constantly apparent to them. Nobody can say that we don't have to be vigilant or we don't have to return. 
because um, especially in waking up that's why this waking up thing is very important because it may seem like I am the body that went to sleep but actually you are not the body and who knows what all adventures in which universes you've had you see and then this play is back <laughs> now this realm is back you see so we can't presume that okay if I went to sleep in the presence I'll wake up it may happen most of the time but we can't just presume it so this short circuiting the mind's trick right first thing in the morning to return to the presence is very powerful Father, at some points in the day, um, it feels quite clear that uh, the presence is, you know, is the life in which the sensations are appearing. It's, it's the, in fact, the, it's the projector, it's the active one, and then it's projecting out the body and other things. But I mean, really the body, once you start to feel the body, like, okay, so the body's on the screen. Um, and then at that point, you feel like, uh, you know, everything is manifesting from the yeah. presence. All the doership is, is, with, uh, is with, uh, with God. And so all you can do is, you know, just, it's, you know, it's the only intelligent thing you can do is to be with the creator than to be with the passive creation. Yeah. You want, you know, to be with, with, with life as opposed Eric? to with the product of yeah. the creator. Yeah. Uh, but but these are fleeting, fleeting glimpses. And then also a lot of times, um, you know, there's this sense about I feel presence, and now you know um, how how do you start the inquiry again or start you know again it's the the agent again becomes this person. Yeah. You know the agency is now shifted, yeah. and I've seen the that the doer was the presence, yeah. but then again now it's I'm back to. Then we start chanting, and then you know we start, and it's the me. Right? Let me start chanting. Yeah. Let me start yeah. doing the inquiry. Yeah. You know, it feels like, and the body is now trying to find God. So how do how do I how do I break this? Uh, it's like a pendulum. Yes, yes. Okay, that's a good question. So there are two alternatives. When we get ourselves, find ourselves caught. You see? Then there are two alternatives. One is that. We notice it and we are able to drop the me. You see, we are able to become open and empty. There is no me. And naturally in that open and empty, the present uh, light will become apparent. The other option is that the me seems stickier. Just the noticing doesn't seem enough. You see, if the, if the me seems stickier, then, then the me better do whatever chanting, whatever prayer, whatever this thing, whatever is needed, because uh, otherwise the me itself will use the Advaita excuse to not return to God. That what you said not other, even the practice prayer or inquiry can be manakarliya. Hmm. And that Shabri example is, if she were to I laid the flowers and I got the bear and she was satisfied with that and that's so would it what is the way out of that can she like God is coming if that becomes the focus or what how to yes like you would not have the patience to do it for half a century without that faith that uh, God is aware he knows me he knows every aspect of my existence, he remembers things which I can never remember about myself. So, just that much faith is enough for us to dedicate our whole life to him. What is the fear? The fear is what will happen to the rest of it. But who is doing the rest of it? When Krishna picked up the Govardhan, yeah, the others also came and put their sticks. No? But who was actually holding it up? Yeah, but why did he get the others to come? Yeah. 
like the, that's on the fear the what am i saying uh, like it just feels that until i actually meet him it will always be about me some some whatever i do it's only after i meet him and sony then i can make it about him is it like that so whatever you're doing it's on some faith that he is real isn't it so that faith was not there maybe 5 years back so this will just keep deepening this is sufi poem i think it's by farid i don't know it says that the translation is even after i die my eyes remain open waiting for you you know that is a level wow. of uh, faith or waiting Beautiful. i can have to that baba farid's uh, words are so so good and they are you know where and this is the beauty of our country so uh, sheikh farid or baba farid's words would not most likely have been found by us in india so much unless uh, if you we were not to meet them in the guru granth sahib ji so they are be, they've been captured in the guru granth sahib so he says some very beautiful thing like this he says um, may my head be cut off if it is not bowed down to you and i don't know if all of you heard what atmika said that even after this body dies may my eyes be open waiting for you it's very very beautiful in every culture in every religion in every tradition if we dig deeply enough we'll find so much love for god because that is the that is what quenches our thirst no matter what else we get in life is it nothing else fulfills our longing like god can or only god can Yeah. What, what is the true nature what is the true nature yeah. i mean in, in other words the body uh, body and consciousness are go together the twins isn't it the body is appearing in the consciousness yeah, in a way in a way in a way same same time the yeah. you know by the 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 cause the creator is the consciousness yeah. and then when the that appearance yeah. fades is that um and consciousness also dissipates what's what happens to no 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 so the, the whole okay so the yeah it is beyond anything that can be said but the the construct that appeals to me the most let me put it that way is it because in god's will everything can be true or false but uh, the construct that appeals to me the most is the dream construct that uh, the this realm will vanish i may remain just with his presence or another realm may show up that i don't know but uh, when this realm vanishes for that which i call me whether uh, there is something left here for the rest to see this lifeless body or not i can't really say <laughs> but uh, it's like in my dream i can see body is full of prana shakti and then empty of prana shakti but the consciousness actually remains unaffected by all of that so that is the construct that i like the most <laughs> So when the, so if it, in the dream thing, yeah. the dream is gone, everything is gone. Then this dream is over for me. Yeah. Okay. So I may just, if I'm lucky, I may just be in his presence and nothing else may show up. Yeah. Or if it is his will, then 
more of this maya will show up and i i hopefully i continue to fight to be in his presence instead of forgetting all about it is it this like a dream in the night is it when i wake up in that dream many times the one who is there is not interested in god at all so what a wasted opportunity so who can tell question she has a question i was uh, talking earlier about uh, you know like when i can really feel the presence yes, of devi yeah. and uh, it's like sometimes after those experiences the force and intensity with which minds come yes. mind comes it's like with exactly. vengeance exactly and i think i kind of quite resonated with the word that he used pendulum and i yes. see myself oscillating actually between feeling like life has there is nothing else yes. for me except her like i want to melt in her feet yeah, or sometimes like it becomes a concept again yeah. and then unrelatable yeah. so it's like i'm swinging between polarities yes. Yes. so already it is grace that you are at least swinging huh because most of our brothers and sisters in the world are living in the hellish uh, seemingly hellish existence of uh, apparent separation from god you see now admittedly what happens is those who come to god to god's presence and then switch out and then have this oscillation going on you see for a while it seems like life is more difficult for them than it was before you see because you start to get a taste of the nectar you see you get a taste of the holiness yes and then it just becomes like an idea was i just making it up was i hallucinating am i fooling myself you see and then we are back into it and feel like wow of course i cannot make this up it's so you see it's like that so although it is grace for a while it seems like more suffering you see but i tell you that everyone who's been in satsang in this room has has made this report as uh, of this oscillation back and forth you see but the pendulum will get more and more weighted towards god you see i just often used to humor everyone and say you see when you go for a movie you see at least most of us uh, so what happens is there's a arc there's an arc of the story the protagonist goes through a lot of bad things a lot of ups and downs and then slowly they build up you know they build up you see but sometimes in the art house type movies what happens is that they just abruptly come to an end is it like that and most people say like if they're trying to be fancy they'll say oh what a great movie but actually most say that they could have played it out a little bit you see because the 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 arc of the suffering was so much but the arc of the redemption of the arc of the freedom from the villainous whatever is happening was very short and too abrupt you see so just like this we've deluded ourselves we've lived in this pretend separation in this maya for who knows how long you see so consciousness also enjoys the the taste of deepening 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 see? so that's how this maya seems to be designed for most of us okay there's some hesitation with this question but it's um but there's sometimes no prayer you you tell me if i'm going wrong yeah, there's um um prayer or presence of god no father sometimes feels deeply uh, pleasurable if that's the word yes. but it's not pleasure like the way yes. pleasure is experienced yes. it's just very deeply pleasurable yes. and and sometimes there's a fear that comes that 
I'm again making it about pleasure here uh, because. But are you? But it's felt, no? It's like, felt. But because it's felt doesn't mean you're making it about that. I don't I mean, go with that you intention. You will experience very sweet love, very sweet joy, and sometimes it will feel arid. You huh? see? Sometimes it will feel dry. Yeah, yeah. You see? But that doesn't have anything to do with our progress. It all only has to do with God's grace, what He wants to feed us in that moment. You see? So, but in your, in your heart, you know that you're doing it for the love of God or for the love of that sublime taste is it? of the sweetness. Yeah. Don't worry, right now we are at a stage where enjoy, just enjoy the sweetness, enjoy everything. Don't worry. Yeah. If it gets in your way, so keep reporting. <laughs> when I when I think about it's when I'm not in the presence of God, I've completely forgotten about that. Yeah. Uh, but when I chant His name, again it's felt in the heart. Yeah. So then I don't go for that, but yeah. um, but that's enjoyed. Like in, I genuinely like. I feel like there's some. Yeah, yeah. It's good to enjoy it. Yeah. It's from that, that all the Leelas of Krishna, all the, in that bhav, all this was written and experienced by them. Yeah. And you'll notice that if your eyes waver from him, then life gives us nudges. If we learn to follow nudges, then we are okay. Don't wait for the slaps. <laughs> Sublime, sublime taste. Taste that is that is seen. Some that's the experience what we yeah. enjoy. Yeah. Well, it's unlike anything else you've tasted in the world. Yeah, and the taste of God. Something. Else. And that's also seen like it's very subtle at times. Yeah. It is. It is, uh, and something then wants that experience again. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how you can get trapped in the, yeah. in the taste of the experience rather than of God. Okay. But I'm saying that sometimes because the mind knows too much spirituality, yeah. it's placing barriers before we even encounter that problem. I feel sometimes like it's too much gyan, like I don't yeah. want any more <laughs> gyan. Uh, I mean, like too much known yeah. mentally. So the mind comes up with these trump cards. Hmm? Says, ah, it's the taste which you like. Yeah. Is it? It's not God, it's the taste which you like. Yeah. Is it? Which itself may serve as a trick to keep you away from God. Huh? So. Taste it hundred times, then we'll see if you are attached to it. <laughs> it's it's um, there's a that's why when we I don't know how to say this actually when we start to love the taste of the untastable, you see, like the purity, like suppose you, you've gone to uh, a Middle Eastern country or Mexico or something, some of these countries they drink Coca-Cola like water, huh? so if you're a visitor there, you're just being offered Coke, 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 you're having it, after five glasses or something you're like, no, just give me some water, you see, so the pristine taste of the presence itself is so, it quenches our thirst much more than even the, the sublime byproducts. So don't worry, I don't feel like any of you will go off track. 
If you become a bliss junkie, then I'll tell you. Don't. <laughs> I don't see that at this point. Yeah. So don't let these things prevent you from being with God. You see, because then again we are solving it for me. Do I want taste or do I want God? You see, the locus shifts back to the me in even all of this. Stay with God. No, no, self is self and God is God like that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> you see, so if you're being Vedantic, then the highest God is the Nirguna Brahman. Huh? Then the Saguna, the Saguna is like Ishwara, huh? Saguna Brahman. Then the Jagat is the creation of this world, which is also called Maya. So, it's very beautiful. Uh, is it Gyandev or Namdev who said, Saguna Nirguna Eku Govindure? Whether it is Saguna or Nirguna, it is the same Krishna. But it's also very beautiful because you also find that holy presence within yourself which is both Saguna and Nirguna. The being that you come to, is it Saguna or Nirguna? Huh? It's both, isn't it? Because if it was just Saguna, then it would be like an object. You see, if somebody could cut it out and say, here, God, Atma. You see? And if it was purely Nirguna, it would just be like a pure awareness. You see, therefore un inaccessible for most of humanity, if not all. You see, so this Sadguru presence, this Atma within, this presence of God, this Holy Spirit, whatever name we give to it, you see, it serves as an escape from reliance on Maya because you encounter something which is unique. In the world, we only encounter objects. When you encounter something which is truly there, but not an object or beyond an object, then our eyes open up and say, what is this? How can it happen? You see? And in the light of this presence, you see, then we are able to dive deeper into the pure Nirguna. The pure Numinal cannot be found unless it is in the light of the Sadguru presence within. Has anybody met anything which is both an object and not an object? In the world we can't meet such a thing. But your Atma is there. Your presence is there. Huh? No, feelings are just pure sensations, phenomena. And what, what else do they have? You can't take it like an object. You see, what you can say, okay, because I tasted this, I was feeling very angry or very happy with the quantified amount of feeling that you're experiencing. You see? You see, more or less. With Atma, you cannot say more Atma or less Atma. With its byproducts, you may. Isn't it? Yeah. Your presence, your being is not more or less. Your focus may be dissipated. Somebody says, Lord Shiva said to Sage Vashisht, in quotes, that constant experience of pure Satchitananda God situated in the heart region is the best meditation and that itself has been called the highest worship. Beautiful. 
the prayer of the heart you can marvel at how every tradition says the same thing but it's actually how it is no so <laughs> all sages of different cultures traditions find ways to express the same same reality of your